So the hard way we've used for this, um, you could use a 4360 um, as shown here. You could also use a larger 456 GC um, if you wanted to put other SIM disc columns. But we've got to remember this is quite a high temperature SIM disc column that's going to go in this. So this is quite a restriction because um, you're going to go up to 430 degrees Celsius. So up there, 435 degrees Celsius. So it's really quite high temperature. Um, as you'll see, this is why we cannot fit the DHA in the same GC. Um, we're going to use a different GC just because of the column that we use. So it's a cold on column injector we're using. We're also going to use a high temperature FID. Um, all the ferrules in that are all selected for high temperature work um, because we need to go to the high temperatures to elute the last bits of the last fractions of the crude oil. And we have different cooling options uh, to cool the oven and cool the cold and the cold and common injector. So the column we're going to use is really quite a very short one because we're not we really, we're, we're more interested in the, in the distribution, uh, the mapping of the boiling points than we are on physical separation. Um, so it's a short column, only five meters long. It's a mega bore at 0.53 millimeters ID, and the film thickness is uh, very thin at 0 0.09 microns film thickness. So it's a high temperature sim disc column that we're using. Um, so it's just a, a very short mega bore thin film column that will be used in this used in this analysis. So here's the injector that's used. It's a cold on column injector. There's no split involved. It doesn't have a split line fitted. Um, it's just a very simple uh, capillary on column injector. We can uh, we're using a mega bore column. You can fit 0.32. ID columns. Um, in the cross section is here we have a cooling pipe, the yellow cooling pipe. Um, it can be liquid CO2 or it could be liquid nitrogen, liquid CO2 being the most popular. And it has a heater uh, on the side as well, a heater cartridge that's really sort of uh, inside that uh, silver or sort of grey part at the side. So it's very small and compact. Um, it's got a very short nozzle in the GC column, it goes into the GC column area. So there's not a lot of area for cold spots at all. That's why it's very useful in this technique. There's not, there's no cold spots really. Um, the glass liner that you see is really a needle guide uh, for the auto sampler syringe needle to go in. And that just guides it onto the top of the column itself. So it's an on column injector. There's no split. So it's 100% of the sample will go onto the column. We're injecting quite small amounts, so we're going to take an, we can take an, uh, an ordinary auto sampler syringe. Uh, from the auto sampler, it can be all automated and it will do the on-column injection for you. And we're, uh, you're, you're, you're talking about maybe only injecting 0.2 of a microliter from the, from the two mil sample vial. So being an on-column injector, it, the heater, on the side is ramped. So if I go to the next slide, we'll be able to see the temperature program that's used for the injection. So here's the some screenshots from our Compass uh, CDS software that's used to control drive the GC. So we're going to start at a warm 70 degrees Celsius. We're using carbon disulfide, it's diluted in carbon sulfide. So we're at an initial point of 70 degrees Celsius, and then on injection, we're going to ramp at the same rate as the oven. We're going to follow the, the oven. And we're going to ramp it all the way up to 400 degrees, 430 degrees Celsius. And just hold it there um, during the analysis. So also um, with the carrier gas, the control of the carrier gas onto the injector is by an electronic flow controller. It is a flow controller, not a pressure controller that we're using this time. Um, it's an EFC model 23 flow controller. And that's flowing quite rapidly at 25 mils a minute for this analysis. It is a, a mega bore column, a 0.53 uh, ID column that we're using. So we're using quite a fast flow rate uh, through the injector. And we're also ramping it up where, uh, as well, following the, the uh, oven ramp that we'll see shortly. So 
So here's our column oven ramp. So it's subambient. It's cooled. You can use liquid CO2 um, or you can have your oven fitted with a different uh, valving system for liquid nitrogen. Um, CO2 maybe being the most popular one. So we cool the oven to a subambient minus 20 degrees Celsius, and then on injection, we're going to ramp at this rate of 15 degrees Celsius per minute, all the way up to a very hot 425 degrees Celsius. And we're going to hold it there for 10 minutes. So the analysis time is about 40 minutes. And it's really quite a high temperature. This is um, why the DHA column will be fitted in a separate GC. It just can't handle that high temperature at the end. So here's uh, a cross section of an FID or an FID. Um, so it's a high temperature FID. What we've taken is our standard FID. Uh, we've put some high temperature fittings inside it, high temperature ferrules inside it, and added some additional insulation uh, so that we can get a higher maximum temperature out of it of 450 degrees Celsius. It's a flame ionization detector much like others that will use a hydrogen flame. So we've got hydrogen flowing in with the air and a makeup gas um, to uh, and when the sample burns uh, we'll get some ionization and we'll measure the signal from with the FID so it's a, a straightforward FID detection but with some high temperature fittings and ferrules um, so you can see on this slide We've actually taken the set point for the FID as a way up at 445 degrees Celsius. Um, the data rate doesn't have to be very high for this analysis. Uh, 10 hertz is more than ample uh, for this in this analysis. We're not got, uh, we're, we're looking at cut points of resolution. So the data rate 10 hertz is more than adequate for this analysis. We're using nitrogen as a makeup gas. You can use helium. Nitrogen is just much, will give you definitely a bit more signal, uh, more a better response than helium. Um, if you don't have uh, nitrogen available, you can use helium. But nitrogen is definitely the one that's going to give the most most response. And we add the makeup to uh, just add to the response of the FID. So we've got our makeup gas of nitrogen. Remember, we've still got 25 mils a minute of carrier flow. So that builds up to a total flow into the FID of 35 mils a minute. So the combustion flow for hydrogen uses is 30 mils a minute and the air uh, is 300 mils a minute. So for the auto sampler, uh, we've got two auto samplers both look the tower looks is the same in both uh, you can fit you can have two different bases uh, one base will have a carousel that will accommodate 200 two mil vials um, we have an auto well it says auto samplers an auto injector is also called which has a which can, you can fit 10 mil uh, 10 two mil vials you can fit five mils and 10 mil vials through it so it's good for process labs, these sort of things. What I would say is, though, is the tower moves. And the, the, the tower can moves in an arc, so it can cover two injection ports. But by moving in an arc, the injector, the, the syringe, is not held above the injection port. And this is important because we're going to inject carbon disulfide, which is very volatile. So this means that the tower will move away from the hot injection port after each injection. Um, so into the cooler laboratory air, um, so your needle and your syringe will, will be nice and cool when, for the next injection into the volatile carbon disulfide samples. Um, so that is um, so. There's no modification to these auto samplers. It's the same auto samplers that we that we go out for any sort of liquid injection. It's just that with it is very useful to have that tower. Uh, to move away from the hot injection port after analysis. We don't have to have any extra cooling. Um, we can cool the vials. There are cooling options for the vials. There's a hot plate as well if you want to sort of slightly heat. But remember, the sample is diluted in carbon disulfide, which is very volatile in itself. <laughs> 